Guys, Simon Huck is here today, but by popular request and demand, like most of it is me. <laughs> no, there was, I sent you the screenshot. It was like one person <laughs> out of 17,000 DMs you got. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly it's me because Simon Huck, you all know him. That's the thing. And I told you for the last couple of times that I've seen you, like, you make me laugh like no other person. I like, kneel on the floor like every time i'm with you i need to like hold on to like uh, something i love you kneel die and that's just one of your amazing qualities so i was like you need to come on the podcast you're so mysterious you think i mean i feel like i lay it all out oh you lay it you like your whole social media is reposting what people post <laughs> What are you laying out? When are you laying anything no, that, out? That just triggered me because <laughs> you know what? Is it bad? I just think it's so nice when someone supports one of the I know. seven brands. I have. <laughs> so I like to show the, I repost everything. No, I repost too. It's like so gross. I don't want. I repost when it's not my brand. Someone's no. like, I bought Uggs because of you and you I'm not getting anything. Every smoothie ever invented. <laughs> you are actually working at Erewhon. <laughs> That's a trigger because you know I'm done with that. I'm done supporting other people's smoothies. You just posted one yesterday. No, I said what I said. Don't post me in them anymore. Right. It's enough. It's enough. Like yeah. it's unrelated to me. I haven't but, tried any of the smoothies. But what I mean is you are missing. What are you laying out? You want me to do more like direct to camera? No, I don't want you to like do a Q&A. Oh my God. Maybe do a Q&A. No one, like what do they want to know? They want to know. I just, I get... I think I'm like everyone else who like dreads social media. I get nervous when it's like about me. Really? I'm, yeah. Like when I'm talking to camera, like I look at it and I'm like. What are you doing? Who is this creature? <laughs> no, but you crack me up because I think that I can tell when you're feeling that way. And it makes me laugh even more. Like when I do my deep bloat gummy. No, that's what I'm no. saying. The deep bloat and no. the whole thing about when you travel, I'm like, he's doing the traveling yeah. thing again. <laughs> Why? No, and Phil, Why just when you travel? Because I don't know if you feel like this, but I'm inspired. When I travel, all my demons like like they're they're dissolving in front of my like in front of me. Like yeah. I go on the plane and I'm like, I come up with an idea. I'm like, oh, I should do an Instagram story about la la la, and I do it. But then when I'm in my office, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm nothing not. Nothing comes up for you. Nothing comes up. Nothing bubbles. Nothing bubbles. Okay. So let's go back to the story you were starting to tell before we started, which is just a funny little anecdote um, that Sophia Hutchins, is she dating Caitlyn Jenner? She's friends with her? No. So she, it's a, it's a mystery for a lot of people. She is just her friend. Yeah. She's her manager. Oh. So they are not, they I didn't are not know the romantic. managing. Nope. They are not. She actually has this incredible sunscreen. She's like a businesswoman. Like, wow. Like a boss. Like she raised venture capital. She has this amazing company. That's this, um, it's like a sunscreen company that like goes on and I don't know what it, I don't say, I don't know exactly what it does. Did you repost? I, I definitely reposted it. And I think I even did an Instagram story, but it was like a year ago. So like, whoop, fish memory. Okay. So Sophia Hutchins, a lot of people yeah. know her now because she hangs around Caitlyn Jenner a lot. Yeah. Manages. I didn't know that. Yes. It was just a funny story because you were reposting all the birthday love. Yes. You so just kind. turned. A hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I actually turned a hundred. I turned 39. You're which, so dramatic. But in gay years, I just want everyone, <laughs> I want our listeners to know what yeah, that means in us. gay New York years. Okay. I am a retiree. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally a retiree. I can't. Like I just, Is yeah. it because Phil is like. Three. No, and do you see what Phil's posting lately? The five <laughs> pictures and the shirtless pictures? No, he's the, thirsting. No, the hunger. <laughs> the gym. The gym. I walked in. We were staying. The at, blurry, like, no, I know. He's from like, oh, a my cab. Young friends think this is, I'm like, young friends, you're literally my contemporary. You're 33. I know. He does look really young. Not that you don't look young. <laughs> <laughs> But but Phil is like a BB. Like he's a BB. Like he's a BB. And he's but he's like, not. But thirty. I'm thirty three. I feel yeah. like he looks younger than me. That's annoying. And I think that that's a gap. Like when we started dating, he was twenty six. I was whatever that would be. Like thirty three. No, he was twenty six and I was thirty two. Oh, that's so funny. that's a pretty big gap. Like in twenty six and like he had you know he had one boyfriend pr prior to me. Mm. 
And I knew. I was like, I have found someone who's untouched. You like that? I like someone who isn't in the mix. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like your husband is also, like, not in the mix. Yeah. In oh, that way. he's, like, he's... Anti-mix. He's anti-mix. Like, you're not even in the... I mean, you are in the mix. He didn't... He. Do you mean the mix, like, the industry? I mean... Well, I actually meant the gay mix. Oh, but, no, that's what I... That's yeah. what I... That's what I understood. I meant the gay mix. Yeah, he like, you don't want to, like, uh, some, to marry someone who's hooked up with, like, 100 people that you 157 know. 157 people. Right. And also who, like, knows what horse meat disco is. Like, that <laughs> reference, which you, as, like, somehow you knew what that was. Because, because of a guest that was on. Oh. I told you. Which, remind? Karamo. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And then I, and I asked you because you're very, like, zero bond, like, you know, and I was like, why aren't we going to horse no, meat? I do. First of all, I love, I love. I love gay horse meat. <laughs> I've never been to horse meat. First of all, the gays don't want me there. They're like shirtless, <laughs> vibing out and touching each other. I am like an old lady with my cane having my vodka soda. And like, yeah, you know, it's not for you. But wait, so see, the, my cue cards are going to go to shit oh, because of you. I'm so honored you did cues for me. Was it the intern who did that? <laughs> You're reading them. For what the first intern, time. babe? Oh no, intern. We know that I'm not that kind of vibe. Oh. Anyway, the Sophia Hutchins thing. I can't believe I'm still trying to go back to this. <laughs> are you, where are you looking? Should I be? No, looking? this is just when I'm like doing an office moment. Oh. Okay. Do you get it? You guys. Right, but I don't. No one's s- watching this. No, I know, but I don't look there, right? That's fine. Oh, am I supposed to? <laughs> There were no instructions <laughs> prior to coming on. If you want to do an office moment, like, you know. Right. <laughs> the squint. I got okay. it. Okay. Okay. What I thought was funny is that Sophia Hutchins, who you probably like met once, the only picture she thought to post of you for your birthday was your Botox ad. <laughs> okay, and I so- thought, so funny. <laughs> Not only was it my Botox ad, which is like, whatever, obviously <laughs> like, I take Botox, you whatever do what I, you have to do. I yeah. did a, I did a endorsement during my wedding because mm-hmm. I was using Botox and I love Botox, whatever. And so she reposted it as my birthday <laughs> tribute, but like as part of being a Botox ambassador, yeah. a proud ambassador, <laughs> you have to put all sorts of like legal jargon in. So the entire post is legal jargon. It's like six paragraphs of like FDA disclosures, right, right. and then that was my repost, <laughs> which I then reposted. <laughs> that is one of the funniest things. And it just, I think things that make me laugh like this are because of the world we live in, of yeah. like birthday posts. And like, you know, people will just try to find the picture. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Quickly. that's what she did. <laughs> Quickly, she Googled you. Maybe that's what okay. Anyway, okay. She went quick. No, I appreciate it. was kind <laughs> Thank of her you, though. Sophia. Yeah. Thank you, Sophia. Um, and you know what? Just about birthday posts, like I wrote you a message. You wrote me a really, really nice message. And then I was like, and then I had a debate. I'll share this with you. I was like, I want to post our thing because we're cute. Oh, the skin thing? Yeah. That was like when we met. I know. I loved it. But then like I see all these other like influencers, you know, be like, happy birthday, Simon. And I'm like, ugh, this is so lame. You know what you I mean? You felt it was performative. Like, it was like I felt like other people were being performative. And then, yeah. like, I don't want to feel like I'm part of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're not. I know. You're, we're real friends. But, I mean, I think it's just, like, Instagram and has now just become I know. That. It's wild. It's, like, everyone, even, like, anytime there's a star birthday – when I'm like looking on my feed, I see people who are posting in feed tributes to, I don't know. Well, me. Like, me no, for Anne Hathaway. But like, even people that don't even know the person, they're like, happy birthday, so and so. I'm like, do you, have you met them? <laughs> but how nice is it when it's your birthday and everyone's posting? Uh, I said this you. to Phil and he was like, shut up. I was like, I've never felt so seen on my, <laughs> like, you really do feel the love. Yeah, it you is really do. Because nice. do you remember when people used to post on your wall on Facebook? Yes. Do you know that now I didn't, I should take my birth date off, but there's like two. There's two. Yeah, I don't, I don't have my login anymore. <laughs> like, Facebook. Like, but I think I looked like my last birthday and it was like a club promoter that wished me happy birthday and like an aunt, you know what I mean? Right. It's like so it random. used to be like, how many did you get? Like I know. 237. I was late on the Facebook game. So I never mastered. I'm having a little I, I know. never. What's your deal with those? I mean, if Listerine, if you're listening, you should sponsor, sponsor No, he, he's with these Listerine strips. At strips. And at Bye Bye Baby to Baby. I keep calling it Bye Bye Baby. <laughs> and it's deeply insulting. It so is. this like 
funding millions of dollars yeah, for no, diapers. I said it while I was at the event. I was like, so how are you involved with Bye Bye Baby? They were like, <laughs> so I was a hit. People, strangers who don't even know me that well were tapping me on the shoulder. Being, Can I have a strip? And I'm like, I'm here to serve. People love I heard, them. so the first time I heard, it was wild to me because we were at the, and this isn't dropping. This is just real. When we're at the Boohoo show mm. and Food God said to you, do you have a Listerine strip? And yeah. that was the first time. And then you were like, yes. And you I was like, it. what am I with? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, right. No alcohol, no food, no drinks. You guys don't go to fashion shows. So I was like, wait, he knew that you had that. Yeah. It's like a known thing. So Did we I, get deep here. <laughs> I no. So I've been with the strips for 10 years. And I order, they're on the subscribe and save on Amazon. So I get the- No, I'm dying. Yeah. And then for our wedding, we did like a bejeweled Listerine for all and the guests. And they still haven't sponsored you? No, they're very kind. Listerine, I see you. What, they they're, sent? They they don't send, but they <laughs> they don't send. <laughs> Actually, I pay full market value. But they um, they did the, the crystallized things for the wedding, which- Oh, really nice. that's nice. And then as a wedding gift, they did- um, a doll reproduction of me and <laughs> Phil holding strips, which was beautiful. Wait, so this is a real thing. It runs deep. It runs strip. deep. Can I try one? Oh my God. Absolutely. So, so many people take, but then they shove their hands in. They take their, yeah, but it's just their finger and then they take what they've touched. Is this going to help me smell good for my mouth? I just like it. It gives me like a pep. I feel like you're going to die one day and they're going to... Find out that it was because of the Listerine strip. Well, the ingredients are wild. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, okay, this is, I'm getting to my first (laughs) subject just now, by the way. Okay, you're Canadian. People don't know until you say like a boot. Or sorry. Or sorry. Those are my trigger words. I love it. Yeah, those are my trigger words. First of all, it makes sense because Canadians are so nice and you're so nice. Thank you. Except a little bitchy. Yeah, a little, am I, am I? (laughs) Am, I mean, I, I would little, not like you if you were Yeah, a little nice. edge, a little edge. When I first moved here, I moved in 2005, and I worked for Food God, then Jonathan, and this woman named Lizzie Grubman. Do yeah, I know, and I do. I know yeah. who she is. I remember, this is a true story. My p- producer had emailed her about one of her clients coming on my oh, show. Cool. No, wait for it. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, hey, does your, and this was when I just started, like, not a lot of people knew me, but it was like a reality star. Yeah. And it was like, hey, like we want for her to come on Not Skimming Enough Out Podcast. And Lizzie Grubman did a reply all when she meant to forward it to her client. And it was like, like, how do you want me to get rid of that? Like, get rid of them, right? Like something like that. That's a That was who. my only yeah. experience. So She's you so worked. Funny. So, so wait, you're jumping. You're not letting me oh, do sorry. my question. Yeah. You're Canadian. Yes. Born and raised in Canada. Yes. We're in Canada. Ottawa. Ottawa. Which is the nation's capital. Oh, d- yeah. Okay. So I grew up in Ottawa and then I went to school in a town called Kingston, which is like a small university <laughs> town. And then and then I moved to New York right from there. Do you still love Canada? I oh, I my second wedding was in Canada. I I love Canadians. They're so sweet. It's like a just the vibe is completely different, but I'm still very proud, although I'm an American citizen now. That's wait because of Phil. No, oh no, I would not give him that. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I did it on my own. Oh, with like work. Work, like it took me fifteen years. Wow. Yeah, they it's don't. It's wild it easy. because you don't realize that like Canada is a separate country, mm-hmm. and you do need to. You need to show a lot of paperwork. We did interviews. I had to get people to write me letters. Like, wow. It was a whole thing. Okay, so I want to know though, when you were growing up, did you, did little Simon know he wanted to be? in the industry. Okay, so little Simon didn't even know what the industry was. Like little Simon was like, I live in Canada, like what am I gonna do here? And I thought that I wanted to be a lawyer. Like I remember being like, ooh, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Cause I had watched Allie McBeal and I was like, oh, she's a vibe. <laughs> I'm into Allie. And then I, from that, I started my degree in political science at Queens, this, this school in Kingston and I always had a subscription to Us Weekly. Like since Stop. I was like, whenever the magazine started, I was there and people. And like my stocking stuff for at Christmas would be all the tabloids and I would like circle all the people. And I was fascinated with like the agent and the manager, like whoever was like walking them down the carpet. I was like, how do I get that Oh, job? so you didn't want to be famous. You wanted to no. like be around it. No, I never wanted to be famous, but I was fascinated by like, 
the mechanics of fame. And back then, like, it was just like, it was newspapers, right? Like, it was newspapers and magazines. So in college, I had a retail job. I worked at, like, wherever. <clears throat> and I was looking through an Us Weekly while I should have been serving a customer. <laughs> and I saw a picture of Lizzie Groupman. And that's how it started. Stop. What, you? So you reached out to her? <clears throat> I reached out to her office. I cold called every single day. How I was old like, were you when you were doing this? 20. You reached out to her office, cold called, yeah. said what? I said, I will work for free. I'll do whatever I can. I just really want to work for you. And at that time, I th I didn't even know what she did. I thought maybe she represents people. I thought she like represented Madonna. I had no, because the idea that like you're a publicist, but you're around celebrities, like I thought it only meant one thing. And yeah. now it means a whole lot. It's like a huge industry. Yeah. So that's how it started with Lizzie. So, but that worked for you? Well, it was it was very unsuccessful in the beginning. Yeah, I would call every single day. I would speak to her like then CFO. He would hang up on me, and then finally someone picked up and was like, "Oh, well, if you're in New York, come in for an interview at like three o'clock on a Thursday or maybe Friday, whenever you feel like it." And I was like, "Oh, that's a job interview." So I called my parents. I'm like, "Big news! I have a job <laughs> offer." And like, I actually had like seventeen dollars. No, so I, like to get me to New York was like a feat. Yeah. So I'm like, how am I going to get here? So like we have this airline in Canada called Air Canada. Yeah. And like we had air miles. So I flew in. I stayed on the sofa of like a friend of a friend. And I went in for my job interview, which like was totally unscheduled. Like they were like, who is this criminal in our lobby? <laughs> and Lizzie. Wait, did you like dress up? I wore. No, I'm dying. No, it was criminal. I wore. <laughs> did, you, did you guys have United Colors of Benetton? Was that a brand in this country? Yes. Okay. It was the brand in Canada. <laughs> And there was a khaki suit that was shiny and iridescent. And so I wore a khaki suit. No, dying, dying, dying. Khaki blazer, khaki pants, and these square toe diesel shoes, which I thought were... Wait, what color were the shoes? Oh, I like black and like <laughs> shiny and like an acrylic material. It was in a tucked in t-shirt. It was sunglasses that were like, actually like the Simple Life sun. Like it, they were so crazy. And I wore, I remember wearing it on Air Canada. Like I wore it. I remember where, like getting on the plane being like, they don't know that I'm going to Hollywood. Like I was so, but I was so excited. Like I was like, this is, I had never been in New York. I had been in New York once prior, but stayed at the West End on 42nd Street. That's actually not New York. And I'd only been there for like 12 hours. So I was very and excited. And you came for this, for this like- I came not non-scheduled. Non-scheduled, not a real interview. And so I walk into Lizzie's office. I'm in the lobby. Like at the time she was filming a show, show called Power Girls. I remember it. Yeah, the Power Puffs. So there were these four girls who were like running PR in New York City. And so the camera crews were inside the office. I was like, I'm actually famous. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. And then Jonathan was there. Jonathan was there. And he, as I walked in, he was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> And at the time, I was an air traffic controller. So I spoke with my hands. No, you really were. I was like, I'm so excited <laughs> to be here. And he was like, are you okay? He literally was like, are you okay? And I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> He's like, you're using your hands a lot. This is like sentence two. And I'm like, okay, New York's abusive. <laughs> like I immediately learned that like I would have to toughen up to like get a job in the city and, yeah. and to work, work for them. So two hours later, I met with Lizzie. I think Jonathan was kind of intrigued by like my endless- Outfit. Food. Yeah, well, the outfit. <laughs> they were so mean about the outfit. They were. I didn't know it at the time, but they kept asking like, tell us about your- <laughs> Like Lizzie's like, Lizzie was like, tell me about your outfit. Like, do you, <laughs> do you have other interviews Is today? Is forcing you to yeah. wear it? I just, I didn't okay. know like the sarcasm until like I got the job and I was like, oh my God, they were so mean. <laughs> oh, it's like in Mean Girls, like I really yeah. like your- your bracelet. Fully. Yeah. Fully. Oh well, Jonathan, God. especially, he was like, I mean, that's his like, kind of his love language is like mm. playfully teasing. At mm. the time I was 20. Yeah. So it was not playful Wait, for me. Is he your age? No, he, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm, he won't listen to this. He's a decade older than I am. Shush. Yeah. So I don't even know. I, you know that I asked him his age when I met him and he wouldn't tell me. Yeah, I'm so sorry, food god, <laughs> but like it's on the internet. Um, so he's this will be his fiftieth this coming year. Wow. Yeah. So he okay. So he, was he working with Lizzie at the so time? It was called Grubman Chebin PR, 
and they had a PR company together. Wow. And they were kind of these hot shots running. At the time, I don't know if you remember this, but like New York nightlife was a thing. Yeah. Like it had star publicists and like celebrities were going to nightclubs. Like One it oak. was Lindsay Lohan was like, Right. It was like the era of oversized Rachel Zoe bangles and like Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton. Right. And TMZ was kind of on, just starting. And that's when I really started my career. Wait, so they, did they tell you on the spot if you're going to start? No. Well, first of all, it was an unpaid internship. <laughs> so it wasn't like a big, it wasn't like I landed the dream job. <laughs> And they were like, you can just like get us coffee and get us lunch twice a week. And if you want to start, you can, but there's no guarantee of ever having a job. So I called my parents and I was like, huge news. <laughs> huge news. I got the job. And they were like, that's amazing. What's the pay? What's the compensation? We spent like $1 billion on your education. So like, what are you going to be getting? And yeah. I'm like, I said, you know, it's a three month trial. I just like, I told lie after lie. I'm like, it's a three month <laughs> trial. There's like a big industry. Publicists do really well. It's a lucrative industry, which anyone who's listening who's a publicist knows, like, that's not the vibe. <laughs> like, most people at the time who worked in entertainment PR had very wealthy parents mm. who, you know, like a lot of them grew up in New York City. Like, it was a glam job to yeah. have, but not a job for yeah. someone who did not have cash. <laughs> so that that was like the beginning. So they, so, so you moved for this unpaid I moved a week, internship. I moved a week later. But did you finish school? So I had three other credits, which I did online. Um, I think people didn't even think I graduated. There was like this big rumor going around, <laughs> like, like my college hey, I'm town. still, I'm, I'm going to like. Google it. <laughs> I'm gonna, Call the registrar's I'm office. Gonna, I'm going to talk to the rumor people. I'm going to be like, listen, he did start stuttering. Yeah. About the finished college. Yeah, I didn't. I finished. You finished. I finished it um, online and I was 20 years old like living on the sofa of my friend, Melissa Gray, who is still one of my, is one of my best friends. And she was like a travel publicist. And I just lived on her, her sofa for a year. Wow. Made and did no you end money. up getting a job? It was kind of a crazy, it was a crazy journey. So they did not pay me for a year. And so How I How did was, you live? Did your parents support? Credit cards, parents, like I had just very little money, but you know, you're 20 years old. You're in the greatest city ever. Yeah. You don't need a lot. Like, yeah. I, you know, the clothing was scary. Like I wasn't going to dinners. Yeah. I remember Jonathan would invite me to a dinner yeah. and I'd be like, I am not ordering one <laughs> thing. Cause you know, you're 20 years yeah. old and he's like, do you want to come to Nobu? I'm like, uh, yes, but I will be <laughs> drinking and eating water. Like I, I was such a kid yeah. and everything was so impressive wow. to me. That is so, let's take a moment like where you are today and yeah. like where you started. I think it's so important for people to like see that when people want something and like yeah. you wanted this and it doesn't even have to make sense. Like you wanted something that you didn't even really know what it was. I thought that what Lizzie and jo I thought that Lizzie like was a, an event producer. I thought that she threw events. I thought I would be like <laughs> lighting candles at a dinner party. Like I didn't really know. Wait, didn't you do? I saw, I read that your first event was the, the Diddy white party yeah. in the Hamptons. Yes. Yes, it was insane. So it was event. So you did have an it event. It was, yes. So what Lizzie and Jonathan did was they procured celebrities to attend events. Mm -hmm. They did red carpets. So they would invite all the red carpet media. They would bring the photographers and then they would do all the event press around it. And event press like back then was like, it was a big deal. Like sponsors kind of not ruin things, but ruin things. Mm. Like now it's like presented by Samsung. Like back then it wasn't. It was yeah. just like a party to throw a party. Yeah. And it was the era of butter. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember butter? The nightclub? Oh, my God. Yes, I'm yes, early, I'm, yes, yeah. yes. So butter Monday nights was like, it was like royalty. It was like wow. every star. Wait, and could you go then as an actor? I, so funny story. Yes, I went to butter. I was went as Jonathan's assistant. I went as his intern. Like, so I would be like holding his bag kind of thing. Wow. And I was just there, quiet, nervous. And it's there that I met Brittany Gastineau. Yes. Who um, back then was on a show called The Gastineau Girls. Watched, loved. Or, loved. It was yeah. good. It, well, she was the beginning. I mean, Brittany and Lisa had like, sh they were the beginnings of reality TV. Yeah. It was Jessica Simpson and the Newlyweds. Yeah. Nick Lachey. 
it was the Osbournes and it was Britney and Lisa. And Britney and Lisa were one of the first anchor shows of E. Wow. Before that, it was Anna Nicole Smith. Right. The poor, th- I mean, she passed away on that network. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, so I had met Britney at Butter on, on Monday night and I was like, oh my God, who is this glamorous, like beautiful girl with her glamorous mom? I mean, yeah. Lisa's like a stunner. And six months after that, Britney introduced us to Kim. Oh, I love how he's like knows all the things I'm going to ask. Yeah. It's like making it happen. Well, that's it's just everything happened that way. Like one thing led to another. Yeah, And at the time, Kim and Brittany were really close. That was 2000 and. This is when I'm going to fuck the date. Oh, am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Yeah. This is when um, the dates I'm going to mess up. This was probably in 2013. Yeah. You already like had your own company. Yeah. Way before then. Oh, yeah. So probably 2007. Oh, wow. 2006 or seven. Yeah. Wow. And at the time, Kim was not on a reality show. Obviously, she was a closet organizer. And she was working, I think, with Brandy at the time. She was like styling Brandy. Really? Yeah. And she had a store called Smooch. I remember I from the show. Smooch. Yeah. So that like, that was how it all started. So, wow. So you actually met the the Kardashians before they were like, before they blew up. Well, and take a step back. I was Jonathan's personal assistant for two years. And um, Jonathan at the time was best friends with Nicole Richie. And this was the simple lifetime. Mm. And Chloe was Nicole Richie's personal assistant. So Chloe and I used to be like waiting for our bosses outside of Shut a restaurant. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Wait, how- Chloe was Nicole. I feel like I know this, but I Chloe was Nicole's personal assistant. Yes, it was short. It was short lived, <laughs> but she, yeah, Chloe has gone on to like buy a country, and uh, here I am. But no, she, um, she was her assistant, and I was Jonathan's personal assistant. So I was like running to Subway to get him like his six inch sandwich. Wait, so when did you move to LA? Because you lived in LA with him. I did. I did. So we moved to LA. So we started going to LA a lot and Jonathan really wanted to do a TV show. Mm. I think he, from the very beginning, Jonathan was never meant to be a publicist or work in like what I think he would call the service industry. Yeah. He wanted to be the talent. Mm -hmm. Like it was very obvious that he wanted to be on TV. He wanted a reality show, blah, 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 blah. So we started going and talking about doing a, a show and him and Kim really wanted to do a show based on our company, which was at the time called Command PR. Okay, so wait, just to to give context, you were his uh, intern slash assistant yeah. at Lizzie, and then both of you together started Command PR. So this is when it gets a little bit murky. So a year into the partnership, um, Jonathan and Lizzie ended their relationship. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a Jerry Maguire moment where Lizzie told me before telling Jonathan and was like, I am going to end this partnership. Mm. And do you want to stay working with me or do you want to work with Jonathan? And I called Jonathan 10 minutes after she had that conversation with me. And I said, this is what I just heard from Lizzie. I want you to know that it's probably going to happen tomorrow. And and I think the I think the item had already been placed in page six. Back then, page six was kind of wow. like the one stop shop yeah. for all gossip. This is p- before TMZ, and so we had base. I Jonathan basically called me an hour later and was like, "Okay, let's let's go do our own thing. You're going to be promoted from assistant to whatever, and we're going to start the company again." Because he had already had command PR for 10, 10, 12 years prior. Oh, yeah. So the. So Lizzie was working with him under the command PR thing? Under their own separate partnership. But Jonathan had been working in the industry for years. Oh, okay. So he really just took a pause from the company to restart this mm, or to start this partnership with, with her, Lizzie. I yeah. see. But he wanted you in the new thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That felt good, no? It felt good. I mean, I was so, I, I was still so young. Yeah. That, like everything... Now that I look back in retrospect, everything was exciting, but also so nerve wracking. Yeah. I don't think I found my confidence living in New York City in the industry that I was in until years later. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, totally. The imposter syndrome of like being around all these people in this industry. I was like, oh my God, I'm such a misfit. Yeah. Like, what do I bring to the table? But you bring a lot. Well, I mean, thank you. At the time, I did not feel like I was bringing a lot. I was like... 
I'm an intern. I know nothing. My clothing is whack. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. So you go with Jonathan to LA and you decide to live there and not just travel for like So we work? start splitting our time and then um, we develop a TV show that Kim is the executive Spin. producer. It's called The Spin Crowd. And Kim executive producer. So she believed in it. She was, she was the executive producer and the creator. And at the time... This is the the time when the Kardashians was crazy. This is when like Courtney pulled Mason out of her like you know what like <laughs> like the Lion King. Yeah. Do you remember that scene? Of course I do. Like our I just remember the debut of Spin Crowd was like after that. Like we were the they were our lead in. So I remember reading that it the premiere did like amazingly. Yeah. Like the ratings were insane. Spin Crowd did extremely well. Yeah. Um you know, the, the whole ratings game, though, is, like, how much of the audience do you retain? <laughs> so I think, like, you know, in the end, like, it didn't come back for yeah. a season two. I, I think need if, to rewatch this. It it was absurd. I was wearing bow ties <laughs> and every episode. Because out of choice? I, like, don't know what happened. <laughs> I was wearing bow ties and, like, these insane sweater vests. That I look back Wait, and, and, and glasses, right? And this is pre LASIK eye surgery. Yeah. And pre, yeah, pre rhinoplasty. <laughs> there are a lot of pre's. <laughs> there was a glow up since you're saying. I mean, not that I've turned yeah. into like, you know, I'm. Just, but isn't it wild that you're like, that age, you get hotter? Yeah. I mean, you get more conf. I think you get yeah, more confident. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the or show, hotter. were you into yeah. it? Because you're saying that Jonathan, he was like, front screen baby. Did you feel like, wait, am I also, or were you I, still weird? I felt like the show was like an interesting experience and really fun, but I knew after filming like an episode that filming it with Jonathan was just not ever going to be the thing for me. Mm. I don't know. I just, I, so much of our work, we couldn't talk about on the show. Mm. You know, we have big corporate clients who don't want to be, yeah. don't want to like air their laundry on. Yeah. A TV show. So you had to like create some drama, like friend, like friend and employee. I felt like our em- our employees suddenly be it became like a docu soap about our employees' lives. Oh, uh, okay, like a Vanderpump rule kind of vibe. Yeah, which I, I get. That's what you need. But then, like, people don't care about don't, them. Yeah. So I think after we did season one, it was just it was time. Yeah. Um. So how many years were you with Jonathan? We were together for almost a decade. Wow. Yeah. Like not, yeah, probably nine years. Wow. Nine to 10 years. And then did you decide to, to leave? So I did. We were working. I was, the company was flourishing. It changed. We were a PR agency and then we changed into like what, what we call a procurement agency. So we connect brands with celebrities. We negotiate endorsement deals. The company changed from PR to where it is now. And Jonathan was just not a part of it. He mm. didn't He didn't really want to work in that way. He wanted to be on TV. He wanted to become a personality. The The beginnings of Food God had started, so he was really <laughs> leading into... Wait, do you call him Food God, like, when you see him? I call him John, which drives him... Oh, my yeah. God. What are you... Tr- are you I call insane? him John. But it's also, like, I... <laughs> Gave I mean, birth I've to known you. you. Yeah, like, excuse me. I mean, he still corrects me. Yeah, but no, he's serious about it. Yeah. He's very serious about it. It was a it was a legal change, but I'm like, I've known you so long. Yeah, that I I can't go back. Yeah, it's weird because you're very different. Not weird. You're two different people. But even from the little that I got to speak to him, I really could sense what you were saying, like how he wants to be known for, you know, um, who he, he is, and I feel like that's part of the the food god change is like. I'm my own person. Yeah. This is me. Were you like, do you ever feel like belting out in an Ashley Simpson song of like living in the <laughs> Like, do you feel that? Or are you cool with being on the sidelines? I'm cool being on the sidelines. Yeah. I think I'm happy here. Yeah. I think I'm ha- I'm also, I don't know if you feel this way, but I'm like very sensitive. Yeah. Like being a main character like I, as I was like Ubering here, I was like reading a DM from over the weekend. Yeah. And someone just said something like. Mean? I mean, just not even mean. Like on the Richter scale of mean, it was like a three. Yeah. But I'm like, mm, I'll have to think about this a few <laughs> times today. Like, I'm like, this will sit with me a little bit. 
And yeah. so when I see, like when I see Kim or any of the girls, like they, it doesn't, they're like immune to it. Yeah. Oh my God. They're my, they're my scale. Like if I get a DM like that, which let's say yeah. is five and I'm like, Ugh. yeah. And then I literally have to be like, just imagine yeah. what, you know, what the Kardashians, for example, go through every, like, yeah. they'll just be like, hi, I love you. And someone will be like, find a, yeah. a reason to, yeah, to they, hate on that. So I'm, I always, always try to remind myself that there are people out there fighting the fight fighting the every fight. fucking minute and second. And this probably feels really big to me, but it's not. And as like any brand, it's kind of like part of like the Venn diagram of becoming more popular and building your brand. Like as you gain popularity and gain follower, there's just more hate. There's just yeah, more trolls. It's, it's like the it it, they come. Yeah. Yeah. But what, the reason I wanted you to come on the podcast and for people to get to know you more is because on the show, and I told you this to your face, <laughs> I was like, people don't see. Well, I feel like on this season of the Kardashians, you're getting a little more like Simon moments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Of like making a joke, even though it didn't land. There was a joke that didn't land in Italy. <laughs> I have to go back to that episode. Oh God. Wait, did you watch? I haven't seen. No, okay. I haven't seen You made seen a it joke yet. to diminish, like, in the Domenico meeting. Maybe the Italians didn't get it. <laughs> Cause we, I, we also have our own vocabulary. Yeah. Where we're calling people Debbie's and they're like, who's Debbie? <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I was dying, dying at that scene. Um, but, but yeah, for years, I feel like people could have thought like, Oh, look at that cute yeah. friend. Who's like a little nerdy. Yeah. Oh my God. But like, yeah. you're not. Well, also on the show. And you're fun. Like why? Like, yeah. The, the girl's show is like their show. Yeah. And I am not, I can't, I'm not an actor. So like some people, when they film a show can like turn their volume right, they, up. And they could be like, so Kim, what did you yeah, think of I'm never, what, Chloe? And you'll never I do can't, that. I can't, the, the producer, like no one could even ask me cause I would mess it up. I would stumble <laughs> over my words. I could only just yeah. be who you are for who, real. Yeah. yeah. And I, I say that as like a, that's a negative, not a pot. Like I wish I could nah. turn it on a little more. Yeah. I just, yeah, I wish they picked it up more, like more of your funny moments and, and because you are so likable. Um, I love you. Thank and you. I love you. Um, okay. So that answered the question of who did you meet first? So you met Kim and then you met the rest of the family. Yeah. I think I actually met Chloe first. Oh, as honest, the personal assistant. But I don't assistant. remember as the mm -hmm. personal assistant. And then, and then I met Kim. Um, and I think. Probably like a year. I think their show started in 2008. I think. I don't remember the exact yeah, year, but you. the rumblings of, I think I'm going to do a reality show started around that time. Yeah. And I remember we were at um, Koi. Do you remember Koi? Yes. So Koi on La Cienega was like the spot. Like you would go and have that like spicy tuna crispy thing, which is now everywhere. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, and it's so good. But Koi invented it. Like Koi, if you're listening, you're welcome. <laughs> Because they really did invent it. Yeah. And I remember we were sitting at a dinner and they were telling us like, it was Courtney and, and Kim and they were telling us all about this show with Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest really wasn't Ryan Seacrest like like we know him now. Right. And I, in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like reality's kind of lowbrow. Because <laughs> there wasn't reality back right. then. And it was like not, if you wanted to be like famous, famous, yeah. you couldn't be a reality star. And, and you also saw the Grubman girls show. Right. Right. Power puffs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, right. So yeah, you weren't seeing huge success no, come from this. No, it was such a different time. I think it's a different time. And also like they brought something different probably. Yeah. Well, the show has been successful for all the reasons like we know yeah. it's successful. No, that's so crazy that you were there from the beginning. And from knowing you like, the dichotomy of of you, of like who you are. I mean, you're in Prada today, so it's not really going <laughs> with my what I wanted to say. Do you want me in like <laughs> in Zara? Is it a rags to riches story? <laughs> <laughs> so no, because I feel like at the Lemmy event you were wearing like a Zara suit. Yeah. You know? Were Was you? I <laughs> what was well, I wearing at no. the Lemmy event? I feel like there was something Zara. I don't know. Was there something? Do you not shop at Zara? No, I I don't not shop at Zara, <laughs> but I feel like at the Lemmy event, I was probably not wearing Zara. <laughs> well, what I mean is, okay, even if I was imagining that 
part. Yeah. Or if you lied to me. Yeah. Maybe you lied. Maybe I was like, oh my God, my Zara, you know? <laughs> but by the way, love Zara. <laughs> what I mean is you live kind of like a double life of like hop on the PJ to Italy, do this. Not that your life isn't bougie. It is yeah. bougie. But like, do you have the moments of like, kind of, you know, when Justin Bieber comes off the stage and like the dopamine starts to come down. Like you're living at sometimes like just this extravagant, over the top, abnormal yes. life with 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 the family or with other people that, you know. That like you by nature with. of what I do, yeah. my career, there is this like huge, and I think some people choose to have their life all be that. Right. And I have like, my best friends are all of my like gay besties who aren't in the industry or don't even care or don't even know what it is. And like we play in Montauk together and have like the best, you know, so for me, like I, I, I need that. Yeah. And yeah, I don't even, I'm trying to think like my perspective on that. I don't know. Like, I don't do even, you get, do you get like wowed still like hopping on a PJ or a PP? No. Highly changed the name and I kind of like it. Um, You don't get I don't anymore. I don't because like when you see how like the sauce is made kind of thing, yeah. like I've been in it so long. Yeah. And, so nothing, it doesn't really like impress me like it did or wow me like it did. Like yeah. I, I lived six years, seven years wowed. I was like impressed by the edamame <laughs> at Nobu. Like everything, impre- yeah. like I was yeah. so yeah out of my comfort zone for so long. But then I realized that like everyone is also feels that way. Too. Yeah, I get I what you mean. I get what you mean. Um, so you always, you're so busy. Your line is to just say you're running on fumes. Yes. Like you're barely making it. And you're like, I actually work a nine to five. I do. Okay. So I tell do. me about it. So tell me your day. So my day, I have, um, a marketing company called command entertainment group where we help big brands work with celebrities and influencers. And I've had that forever. And that's what supports my lifestyle. And then I have Judy, which is an emergency preparedness brand, um, which we started three months before the pandemic. Insane. Did that start as like an anxious person awaiting for the end of the world? So kind of, yeah. And I had friends who lost their homes in Southern California mm-hmm. to wildfires mm-hmm. and none of them had an emergency plan. And I have family in Florida who've like, who've been in these storm surge, just no one was prepared. So we thought there is an opportunity to build emergency kits and emergency safety that like doesn't exist. Yeah. So we did it. And then Phil started Sniff, to which I'm, you know, it's his, it's his baby, but I'm involved in, in kind of helping shape some of the strategy. And then I'm Courtney's partner. Courtney's launched Lemmy. It's her baby. She's the founder, but I'm her partner. Yeah. Um, which has been just the most incredible journey to do it with her. I've never had a business with one of the girls. And yeah. Courtney and I are so, it's like just to be a part of something with a best friend. Like I, you know, people always say don't mix business with Yeah. But it's been such a crazy, fun journey. And Courtney's in the best place. Yeah. So we've been working on it for five years. She's been working on it for Wait, five so years. Wait, so she, did she, did, who thought of it? Court, this is Courtney's baby that she's wanted to launch forever. Yeah. And there was like 17 different ways she could have done it. And she was going to partner and she was going to do this. And, and she had all these different options. And she chose, you know what? I want to build the team myself. I want to find like the supply chain. I want to do all the formulations. My like, she really wanted to own every piece of yeah. the business. And were you? Did you offer yourself? Were you like, hey, I could do this with you? It was kind of a natural really? conversation. Like it just. She said, "Oh well, would you want to be one of my part?" Like, and I said, "Yes." Like, I would love to be a part of this journey with you. As he's sitting here with his Lemmy, he loves it. No, the reason I have to tell you, like, of course I trust Courtney and whatever she put into it. But what made me really believe in it is you. Stop. No. Yeah. I was like, si- like, I believe you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like you're because you're a real person to, to normies, you know, and like, he is actually obsessed with the stuff. And I know that you wouldn't put out anything. Not that Courtney would, but I'm saying you yeah. as well wouldn't Thank put you. out anything we that were, isn't. Yeah. Like, people are like, wait, is it actually, you know how people yes. are like, wait, is it actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, no, it, actually no, is. this is this is something that like just from like an ingredient perspective like we spent years and we tried courtney has probably tried 200 formulations of gummies 
Like I would, we would be in like Portofino and she's like two hours away from walking down the aisle. I'm like, try the deep bloat formula. And she's like, can you leave me alone for a second? We I were, know you really do shove them in people's faces. Oh, you're like, take a matcha or a 17 or a 17. It's you need just, to focus. You know what it is? It's, it's, I was never a person for vitamins and supplements. I thought like it was just such a boring, sleepy thing. And so specifically like, like deep bloat, for example, I've been bloated. I'm a blowfish. I've been bloated <laughs> since high school and I don't like capsules. So for us to create a product, for Courtney to create a product that is actually delicious, yeah. and super clean, mm -hmm. but act, and, and also works for me is like, this is a treat. Yeah. No, it is. That's so that was the genesis of the whole business, like taking a category and taking something that people don't want to really take and make it tasty. Yeah. I love that. So you're saying that working together, like you are working with a friend, yeah. like people yeah. would go into it a little, a little with some hesitation. Did you? I didn't because we have worked together on deals and mm. different things for 15 years. Right. And I know the family so well. So I, I know, and she is a perfectionist and there's a certain things that trigger her in terms of like fonts, logos, photo shoots, ingredients. Like there's just things that I know mm -hmm. are going to set her off. And so it's, I have 15 years of experience yeah. working with her. Yeah. She's also at a point because of her relationship and because of how happy she is in her life right now that she can lean in fully and do something like this. Like Lemmy would not have been possible five years ago. Yeah. Like she just wasn't in the headspace. She wasn't. To open her heart up and really pour everything no, into it. No, she is. She's so into it. And she finally, like she said when she was on my podcast, like for years she almost didn't want to do something because everyone wanted her to. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of thing. She's not driven. She is driven by like authenticity, like timing. She has that like spiritual side to her. Right. Which we kind of love. Yeah. Yeah. Like other other people are doing things. They're like, oh, this is financially, this is the right time. Right. This is like a brand moment. <laughs> yeah. Courtney's right. like, excuse me? <laughs> like, that's not a reason to start a business. Like, does that have cane sugar in it? Right. Or... This is organic cane sugar. <laughs> yeah. Are you quizzing me on ingredients? No, <laughs> I'm being Courtney. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. No, she's, she's, which I think is why Lemmy has been so successful. Like, it, Courtney doesn't do anything unless it's a hundo for her. A hundo. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about Phil or Pip and yeah. how you met and fell in love because he is such a cutie. He is. And he's so like, if any, he, whenever I see him, it's like, I, he's just heart. You could tell yeah. that he's heart and that he's um totally not affected by this life or no. lifestyle that he's even a little bit, maybe still like nervous. Yeah. In situations. Yeah. He where is. I lean in and the mo at first I could yeah. get to somewhere and I'm like, uh, like, uh, uh, and then I'll get there. I'm like, get, you know, yeah, give yeah. me one drink and, then and I can talk to like anybody. No, Pip is and still, Pip is yeah. still a little like, yeah, he's so cute. We had a moment at bye bye. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, baby had, to baby. Baby to baby. I'm so sorry. Am I saying it wrong No, now? you're saying it right. Okay, baby to baby. We had a moment and this this weekend where we were at this event. It was kind of this like star-studded charity event. And we were sitting one table over from Kim. Kim donated a million. She do Kim donated a million. On top of all the other money she's already donated and the supplies. You no, know, it's so wild, you guys. So Kim donated a million. And I saw a message in my DMs today being like, so like that's great and everything. But like if you do the math of what... A million is for her. This is what this person said. If you do the math, a million to her is like 5,000 for someone's net worth of 10 million. I don't even know how this person did the <laughs> No. Where can I yell into this camera? How no, but I'm like, person? Oh, but, uh, this one. No. This one. no. <laughs> oh, my God. Camera one. No. The person no. who sent that, you are annoying. No. How annoying? I'm like, Wow. Like nothing is enough. It's a million. It it's is a million. A million dollars. And how many of you out there would be donating? And by the way, that's one of 50 organizations she gives to. Wait, so you went to buy fucking, so we you're going to make me say bye-bye. We bye went bye. to baby to baby and um, we wanted to go congratulate Kim. So we were sitting a table over and I got sidetracked by someone. But, oh. but Bill was. <gasps> you do this thing, you leave him. 
Phil was leading the charge. I said, Phil, you lead the charge. We had to wander through, waddle through all these people. And so <laughs> I- left him on the way. Someone pushed, pulled me in. And so he got to Kim's table. By himself. And it was Kim, Kylie, Chris, and like three other people. And he tapped Kim thinking that I was right behind. <laughs> And I was not. So it was just Phil at the table. And he's so cute. He's like, I just, he's like, I ran away. I'm like, you tapped her and you ran? He's like, I did. No, that's what I'm saying. That like, he's met them how many times? And yeah, like, totally. They love like, him. But right. Family. But he's still like shy. He's shy. And you are, you know, of the room. Yeah. You mingle. Yeah. You go. Yeah. No, I'm unbearable. <laughs> yeah. No, so something similar happened with, um, with Phil when I was at the Lemmy event. And this is what really like, you know, I was just like come into my arms and lay with me. He's the cutest. It, that I got there. And again, this is me being like, oh, like I'm going by myself. Blah, blah, and then I get there. I'm like, give me a matcha tequila. What no, was you the were drink? literally on fire. It was <laughs> insane. <laughs> I, well, it was my event. Let me matcha. You were host. You were on the JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> so I got, oh, so I go to the bar and Phil's there. I'm so excited to see him. And uh, Travis was there, Travis Barker. And he's like, and Travis Barker was like, do you want to let me matcha? Like I'm getting one for court and Avril. Like take a moment. I was like, Avril? Because it was Avril Lavigne. Yeah, Levine. yeah. Which for me was like, I needed to connect the dots in my mind for a moment. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, um, let me tequila. What's it called? Let me matcha. But it, it was, was a tequila. Yeah, it was a lemmy matcha margarita. margarita. Yeah. Lemmy matcha margarita. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I didn't. So Phil had like a martini or something in his hand. Yeah. And I had asked Phil before Travis came over. I was like, do you, like, should I get the lemmy uh, margarita? He's like, oh, I don't know. It's a little sweet. Like, I'm just going to stick to my, what, martini. Right. Then Travis comes over and he's like, hey, like, and he goes to me like, do you want a lemmy matcha margarita? I was like, yes. And then he goes to Phil like, Phil, do you want Phil is so fully with his drink? And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll have one. Yeah, no, the nicest. No, the nicest. And that's like those moments where I'm like, he doesn't want one. So, so kind, so sweet. Yeah. Like obsessed with you guys. He, for real. He's so, like a really, he's, yeah. It was our one year anniversary um, this weekend. And he's just, it's like, I feel so lucky that I found someone. And I really mean this, that like, I always thought in relationships, it's like, oh, you have your part. It's like we are best friends and partners on everything. Mm. Like we are walking through this life together. How many years have were you together before getting married? Uh, this will be our so six years before um, getting married, and then a year you're married. Wait, so did you meet on an app? Yeah, he's gonna be. He hates this story, but <laughs> oh well, cancel, cancel. <laughs> So we, I was like fresh off of a breakup, and I was just like looking to start dating, but nothing serious. So I was on Tinder. I was like Tinderella. I was out of control. <laughs> and I kept swiping and swiping and swiping. And I would have a copy paste message, which is so. <laughs> what was it? Beyond annoying. It was something like, hi, I'm Simon. Nice to like, it was just annoying. Like I, cause it's, Was it sexy or was no. it formal? Oh no, I'm like. It was an email. It was just like, <laughs> hey, I'm Simon. If you want to like grab a drink, like people that I was, cause Back, I mean, back then, even now, like the volume of people you have to go through. Yeah. Some people don't respond mm. even after you've matched. So Phil was in Long Island at the time, staying with his parents. And I was driving to Montauk and we matched. And I then was that annoying person that kept canceling plans. And I kept canceling last minute on Phil for three months until we finally made a plan. And I was like, okay, we're going to go. I think we're going to go to catch for dinner. And then last minute, an hour before, I'm like, I'm not really feeling it. At the time, I was a big pot smoker. Stop. And I know, did you not see that from me? No. Oh my God, I was Pablo Escobar. <laughs> I, I, I Wait, would love to. You? Yeah, yeah. Not during the day. I was like, you know, Working, work. yeah. But at night, I was like- it would chill you out. It would, it would calm my nerves down. Like it wouldn't get you like giggly high, just like- It calm. would do that too, but it, for sleep, I was using it. Like it was And my now thing. you don't smoke anymore? Now I don't smoke anymore. Why? It causes general malaise for what me. What is that? Like just general exhaustion, <laughs> fatigue. I don't know why. I think I overcooked it. I, Wait, so you were smoking a lot of pot. So I was smoking a lot of pot. Yeah. Anyway, I was just exhausted. And so I wrote him being like, you can either, we can cancel or you can come over and smoke <laughs> with me or you can come over and watch me smoke. <laughs> and he has, he saved, he just sent me a screw grab of that no psychotic stuff. message I sent to him. <laughs> And that was our first encounter. So Wait, he came so did he over. Ca- he, he came, came over. 
and watched <laughs> me smoke. I remember I was like in my pajamas. No, I can't. And it was just so like, what a mess. Like, what a mess. Did and you, you weren't with Listerine strips then? I don't, honestly, <laughs> I probably was, but I was a mess. So he, and then so we had a nice night. And then two days later, he went home. Two days later, I said, do you want to come to Montauk? I'm going with like a gaggle of my friends, like a gaggle of gays, basically. Yeah. And he said, yes. He came to Montauk two days later. What a go with the flow, Phil. Which is so not him. He was scared it was going to be some sort of like orgy. <laughs> Little does he know we're so PG-13. He like called his best friend Cassidy and he was like, um, I'm going to an orgy. I'm going to an orgy in Montauk <laughs> hosted by Simon Huck. And I'm terrified for my life. Oh my God, I can't. So that was what we, so that was like, I don't know, four days after. And then he basically, we've been together ever since. So It was that quick. Wow. It was that quick. I love that. And it was. So you never had like a first, like a normal first no. date? That's crazy. Wait, so who proposed? I proposed. Didn't you write something like, you better say yes? So Phil married me, or no, Phil is with me for Montauk. Like we have like a tiny little beach house, but he is. Okay, okay, with it. okay. No, okay. I mean, we have a. It's tiny? No, but I just, it is. We have a wait, small beach wait, house. You've in Montauk. had it. Wait, the one that you're building now? Yes. So it's the same one that you've same had all one, these years? And Phil is in Phil is in love with Montauk. It's his favorite place he in the world. He did a candle, a sniff candle. He did a sniff candle. Yeah. And so I knew I wanted to propose in Montauk. So we went up in like the depth of winter. It was January 2020, three months before the pandemic. And I had all these rocks, these like beach rocks, which were just so painstaking to approve. Um, spell out, you better say yes on the beach. And so I brought Phil down there. It was like 11 a.m. on a Saturday. And of course, like free loving Phil is like, oh my God, what does it say on the beach? Someone left like a rock, like some rock art. And I'm like, well, what does it say, Phil? He's like, you, you. And I'm like, Phil, what does it say? It went on for like 15 minutes. We were in front of the proposal for 15 minutes until I finally, I now know why people get on bended knee. Oh, so they know. So they know. So they know. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it. So I, he still is not reading the stupid rock. And I'm like, at least it will be good for the gram. So I go on bended knee and I, I have been so emotional with Phil. I don't know why. And I started, we, I started crying. I cried our whole wedding. I was out of control. Aww. I, for some reason, so I'm you like. You got on a knee. Wait, did you give him a ring? He got, Yes. I did. Like you proposed I with proposed the ring? I proposed with the ring. Yeah. What kind of ring do you propose? It was a very simple, like uh, rose gold Aww. Cartier so does it, thing. So does it look like a wedding band vibe? It's so skinny. Oh, it's skinnier. And okay. he never wears it. That's not. I nice. know. He doesn't wear it. I don't wear a ring. Yeah. Because I, I don't, don't like rings. Either. Yeah. But I think some gay couples do like watches like a fancy watch they that propose feels, with the watch with the watch some do stop i think it's kind of weird wait so you started crying and then you said will you marry will me? you marry me actually i said you better say yes and what did he say he said yes he Aww. said yes and then i had his entire family at a restaurant down the street which like family for phil phil's italian so family for him is like the most important mm. thing and so we then started planning. We immediately went, but then the pandemic hit. So you had to postpone it. We postponed it a few times. And we knew we wanted to have two weddings. So we did one in LA and then we did one in Toronto. And you guys are the cutest. And we just talked a little bit before we started. So you wanted to have a baby, but you're so crazy right yeah. now that you're going to wait. Yeah. No, Lemmy's my baby. Lemmy's your baby. Lemmy's my okay, baby. Okay. But you also would be really cute with a little baby of your own. Thank you. And it'll happen. It will happen. When the time's right. We did the embryos. We did it all. Like you did, Everything's ready yeah, to go. I think we have 11 eggs. That's a good amount. Yeah. Or what is that? Embryos or eggs? I don't even I know. I don't know either. Yeah. Um. Okay. So before we're done, some quick fire questions. Oh. Are please. you ready? These are so random. You would think I wrote these when I was high. Okay. I'm going to do the randomest one first. <laughs> John Mayer or John Stamos? Mayer. Okay. Yeah. You know that I was thinking, I was trying to like, kind of understand your type, like aside from Phil. Phil, yeah. So it's John Mayer would be like a vibe for you? Over John Stamos, yes. <laughs> like John I mean, Stamos neither, I would say neither are like <laughs> dead on so for me. So who's the dead on, like Hollywood actor? Tanning Tatum, Brad Pitt, uh, Liam Hemsworth. Maybe Liam Hemsworth. Okay. For lack of a better option. Okay. Um, private plane or first class? 
Oh, first class. Yeah. Yeah. See that? That's how I. I don't. I haven't been in a PP, but I don't know. They kind of scare me. Okay. First of all, you have to sing for supper the whole time. <laughs> what does that mean? You, meaning like whoever's plane it is, you have to speak to. <laughs> There's no delicious, you know, meal <laughs> where you're in your little thing watching your movie. Okay. Hi, well, how was your day? Yeah. Like, no, thank you. Okay. And then to go use the restroom. Yeah. God forbid. Oh my God. I go didn't even think of that. And you guys listening, you know how I get on airplanes with the restroom. I'm just going to say that. I have stage fright. I can barely get the engines going. So, so oh I'm, my God, what would I do on a private it's plane? It's a disaster. Oh my God. I'd rather wow. be in my cute, I'd rather be in United. Hello. Hi. Hi, United. We see you. <laughs> Simon is trying to get on my partnership. Hello. Um, I'd rather just be on a plane. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. that. What about turbulence? Is it more in a private jet? It can be really rocky. Yeah. yeah. It can but be really rocky. But you don't get rocky. scared. I don't get scared, but Phil is terrified oh, Phil isn't of good on small flights. planes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I know the answer to this. Zara or Gucci? Gucci. Okay. Um, matcha or coffee? Coffee. Um... Which Kardashian would be your charade if you had to pick one for charades? Oh, I think Chloe. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's so, I feel like she, she would, would get it. it. Yeah, she'd yeah. get it. Well, Simon. Is that it? That's it, babe. Are you sure? No, it's like over time. Did we get everything we needed to hit? Did we? Yeah. I mean, no. There'll okay. be part two, part okay. three. Everything this is we so easy. I know. What did this you think? This is so fun.